in the parking lot of the Riverhead Building Supply and I'm showing you what most rural communities see in their neighborhoods and they see something called a water tower looking dead center of my picture that water tower is the Riverhead Water District's uh, older tower that they do not use anymore they just use it for cell phone towers that's why I'm getting great reception now and it's approximately 160 feet tall as the man in the water district has told me and about 150 feet so much so uh, so much I guess um, at the high water level mark and now the reason why I'm talking about this is this water tower even though this one's not used uh, provides uh, the water pressure to your home. And there, here is an up close or at least a closer version of my same picture here and there's the old Riverhead Water District tank. You can see very carefully when you make it out um, the, water, the uh, cell phone um, antennas encircling the lower part of the bowl of the tank and that's what it's used primarily for but this was the first tower I believe or the second tower in use uh, at one point that was one by the river they've used but they pump water up and by suspending it about 60, 160 feet, uh, that would give the water pressure necessary to enter the homes. Okay, so you can make out the Riverhead Water District Tower, and I'm making this up. And in um, any case, not used, but certainly you've seen water towers like this in many communities. And again, the height of water suspended over sea level represents 14.7. Uh, so 33 feet equals of water suspended equals uh, 14.17 pounds per square inch. And I'm going to show you uh, on pencil and paper soon what I'm talking about here to make these calculations or where I come up with this 33 feet. And all of this ties into manometer problems. Doing manometer problems in class, uh, somehow, somewhere, someone, someone has shown you that water height suspended can be um, equal to mercury being suspended in old-fashioned manometers or barometers. So in okay. this science all around us segment, we're going to figure out what kind of pressure these towers in different communities give us in terms of pressure in our homes. Now, just to be fair, okay, these towers don't give us, these water towers do not give us all the pressure, okay, the, the size of the tubes and, and pipes into your home also can increase and there's also boosters along the way that we talked about but how does the height of the water suspended over some distance give us the pressure well yeah it's potential energy as some people might jump and say but it's got its origins from the beginning of pressure and mostly pressure of air okay the force of air yeah this is water suspended over a, uh, a sea level or ground here. So where is the air coming into play? Where is that origination? Well, in science all around us, we have to go back to uh, Torricelli. Let's talk about pressure quickly. Pressure, of course, is force over area. So if I have gas molecules, they push on the walls of the container in all directions, and they create a force, okay, over an area, just like a balloon would, okay? If you draw a balloon, we know that when you add more molecules into a balloon, like when you blow it up, it expands because, well, there is more particles creating pressure on the walls. Okay, you know when you put something in a fire, okay, a sealed container, eventually, sometimes called the Blevy, is an explosion, a lot of gasoline tank explosions called Blevies, where the um, fire in the um, uh, car actually boils this liquid and creates um, a gas so great that it ruptures the tank and you have expanding gases coming up and they of course hit the fire and become a bolivia or an explosion outward so pressure is something we're definitely understanding in terms of gas molecules put your hand over a stove and you'll feel the force upward of a liquid molecules we call that vapor pressure now we have some pressure equivalents that are very important one atmosphere is what we call the amount of force over an area or pressure duh, that is at sea level Okay, we call that one atmosphere, and we'll use atmospheres a lot. In fact, divers or scuba divers, uh, they're tanks they use to breathe, okay, with ratios of helium or oxygen, okay, um, deal with atmospheres. How many atmospheres? It's a nice way to, to make some of these numbers make some sense. But we also have one atmosphere of pressure is equivalent or equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. Now, this is tied to Torricelli 
who was the uh, physicist in the 1600s who came up with the barometer as nothing more than a way to explain a problem of a pump that I'm going to get to shortly. So 760 torricellis or tor is the same thing as how many millimeters of mercury can be suspended above sea level. That's where the tie-in is here. Now also one atmosphere is equal to 101.3 kilopascals. Now pascals or pressure units that are derived from um, SI units, and that's from another lecture that we can go into, but not today. And of course, one atmosphere is equal to 14.7 pounds per square inch. Notice the square inch uh, force over an area, length times width, there's your square there. So it is the uh, pounds per square inch that we tend to hold on to, that English a unit of pressure, but it's related, okay, to Torricelli in this millimeters of mercury. So somehow I'm going to talk about air pressure and relate it to how high water can be suspended. And if you remember, that had its or originations from something called a manometer, okay? So how we can relate the height of water in a water tower to gas pressure. How do we do that? Well, here was the problem. The great pump, there was a pump built under the um, direction of Leonardo da Vinci, I believe, for the Grand Duke of Tuscany back in the 1600s. And they had a little bit of an issue. They moved the pump to a different location and it required them to pump um, water higher than 32 feet. At the time when they currently use this pump, and very simply, let's explain how this basic pump works. And you've seen these old-fashioned pumps if you look at, I don't know, the Pickers and Discovery Channel, or you look at um, old-fashioned type pumps. But basically, um, I guess this would um, go down. I guess I have the arrow the wrong way. All right, and by going down, this would create a partial vacuum because this would go up. And if this piston moves upward with no air in between, you create a you create a place with no gas molecules. So what you have is a container, okay, where the pump rises up, going this way as a piston, and there's a little valve here, and you have the water connected, and by creating a place. This going up with no gas molecules, you have nothing pushing on the what? On the water here. And what happens is you have the gas molecules, which are water molecules evaporated in the well, or you have atmospheric pressure, I should say mostly, pushing down on this liquid that pulls it up. The reason why the pump works is you create a place of low pressure. And the higher pressure, which is the gas molecules, pushes this upward. So we create a place with no gas molecules. In my page before, what creates the pressure is the gas molecules. Take the gas molecules away, and guess what? You have a deflated balloon, okay? It won't be, have any pressure. So my friends in uh, chemistry here, it is the creating of a partial vacuum, a place where no gas molecules that allows the water to be pushed up by the atmospheric pressure. Now the reason why it doesn't work without it is because when you don't create this, um, this pressure gradient, differences in pressure, the pre air pressure in here is the same as the air pressure he in here and there's nothing to move, there's no gradient, no difference in the force to move it upward. So pushing it downward, pulls this piston up, and as you learn in other classes called Boyle's Law, higher the volume, lower the pressure, you create partial vacuum here. And this low pressure area can't deal with the high pressure, and the force of the pressure of the air pulls it up. So the pump does not force the water up, it just creates an air, a place, really, a scenario for the air pressure okay, to push the water up. Now, Torricelli uh, was trying to fix this problem because they realized that this type of pump can only work within 32 feet. So if you're trying to push water more than 32 feet, 
this didn't work no matter how big the pump was. Now, how about that? You know, of course, the reason is pressure is force over area. So if you make the pump bigger, bigger handles, bigger scenario, you still are left with this type of pump only working 32 feet from where the liquid is to where we're pouring out. And what happened is they had to move this pump. I'm not sure if they had to go inside some kind of castle wall or something. But they, had to, they moved this pump, and they wanted the pump greater than 32 feet, and they couldn't do it. And uh, Torricelli, Evangelista Torricelli, built this experiment with mercury to explain. What he did was he took mercury. Now I'm going to use, um, I think, believe red here. And I know mercury is not red, but you see in thermometers is colored alcohol. Okay, a mercury thermometer looks silver. But what he did is he filled this tube all of mercury, put his thumb underneath it, inserted it. And what he did was he washed some of the mercury, not all of it, just a little bit spill out. And it was all filled, but because of the heaviness of liquid mercury, okay, or mercury, I should say, um, this came down, and what you had was a partial vacuum again. And from this level to the top, he measured this to be about 760 millimeters of mercury. That's where the tour came from. See, at the time, they believed that the action of the pump was drawing the water up, but the action of the pump was just creating an avenue for the air pressure to push the water up. And no matter how you change this pump, water can only be supported about 32 or 33 feet. Okay? And people know that. When you dive underwater as a scuba diver, 32, 33 feet creates another atmosphere of pressure. So no matter what you do to the pump, atmospheric pressure can only move water 32 feet. What does that mean? If we take a tube of water and do the same thing, but this tube has to be what? Let's pretend it's a 40 feet, a 40 feet, okay, a 40 foot tube, okay, and, and you invert it. Well, what would happen is, you've guessed it, some of it would come out, but a lot would be suspended about 32 or 33 feet, I guess I'm staying with 32, feet would be suspended. Now why? Well, it's because atmospheric pressure pushes down on the liquid, kind of pushes down into the liquid, and guess what? Supports only that much of water. Now, if you want to make a barometer of water, you would need a huge tube. Now, a barometer of mercury, you don't need as much uh, so size of a tube because mercury is about 13.6 times more dense. What does that mean? Well, that means the height of mercury in a barometer that can be supported is going to be 13.6 times lower than that of water. Since water is lighter, its density is about 1.0 grams per milliliter and this, or I should say mercury, is 13.6 grams per milliliter. You can see because this is 13.6 times more denser, okay, the height supported is going to be 13.6 times smaller, okay, because if this is heavier liquid, okay, the force pushing down is the same on this pan as it is this pan, but because this liquid is heavier, Okay, it can only support, what, a smaller amount. This is lighter liquid. So what I'm doing here, guys, is I'm showing you how the height of water can be converted into a pressure unit. We do not use height of water as a pressure unit. Okay, if you go on to the first page, there it is. Okay, one atmosphere is 760 millimeters of mercury. We don't have millimeters of water. So if I can take this height of this tank, which is about 160 feet, okay, and convert it into, let's say, millimeters of water, I want to now convert it to millimeters of mercury. And I'll know how much what? Force of air that's needed to support it. It's the same force that comes down. So what Torricelli found when building this was that it's the air pressure that pushes the liquid up. 
and that's how the pump works so this pump just creates a vacuum I don't care how big you're never gonna change this unless you create the air pressure so he suggested you use a force pump where you push down on air to increase the pressure to force something up and that's something beyond the scope of this okay but no matter what to pull water up we have to be within 32 feet even during the newer types of force pumps okay so let's get to the calculations so again we can relate the height of column of water being supported by air pressure into the pressure of this water now you may say I'm still kind of confused a little bit how can you do that well something something due to something called manometers a manometer manometers are devices helping us measure pressure using the differences of the effects of pressure now one of the differences we use is the height of column of let's say a liquid now, I got a gas in here I got a, uh, I got a closed end tube here and I have some liquid and the liquid okay looks like this this gas pressure is pushing on this side of the liquid and in here I have a vacuum all right and in this vacuum there's no pressure pushing back so what's the force or what is the pressure well the difference here to here represents the height of liquid that this gas is supporting and if this is mercury I guess mercury is not red I'm just drawing it and let's pretend that this is a hundred milliliters of mercury well it's a hundred mil, uh, milliliters okay I should say hundred um, millimeters not milliliters I'm measuring the distance um, so millimeters of mercury that would be a hundred tor of pressure and that's a barometer right supporting a liquid above its origin based on the force pushing down now there's other types of uh, manometers there's open tube uh, manometers in this open tube okay let's pretend I have uh, 760 tor of atmospheric pressure due to the gases in the atmosphere pushing down on this liquid okay and of course I've got this liquid pushing down here now based on my drawing wow this gas is pushing up and winning this liquid because if this was a manometer that was okay the same except we had equal levels so if I draw another manometer here and if I had the same amount of liquid on both sides we would say the pressure of the gas is equal to the pressure of the atmosphere and so why mister why well because the pressure is pushing down here and the gas is pushing in here and there's no winner the levels are equal here the levels are not this gas is definitely pushing this liquid up let's say a hundred millimeters it's supposed to be that hundred mill hundred millimeters okay so this is not only pushing up 100 million, but it's also pushing back this pressure pushing down. So if 760 is pushing down, and this gas is pushing against 760 and supporting this column, we would say that the pressure in the gas must be 860 torr. How did I do that? I, I used the level of liquids. It's supporting this column, and it's pushing back 760. So the gas pressure must be greater than the atmospheric pressure by 760. And obviously, I can have it the other way, where the gas is less than. But that's how this works. Okay? Now, but what if I don't have mercury? Well, I have to convert it to mercury, and that's what we're going to do now. So back to my original problem. I have 160 feet of water that's being supported. Okay? And how much pressure does that represent? I'm going to convert this water into column of mercury being supported. And I'm going to relate that into pressure. Okay, and that's the end part. So let's get to that. Okay, so let me just quickly walk you through these um, calculations. I take my 160-foot tower, and what I did was I got rid of feet. I converted my feet to inches. 
And then I converted my inches to centimeters using dimensional analysis. We're looking to get rid of the units I have to get the units I want. And then once I converted to, I know that one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. Then I converted my centimeters into millimeters. Notice the unit left standing is milliliters. So 160 times 12 times divide by one times 2.54 divide by one times 10 divide by one equals 48,768 millimeters of um, a water that is above, let's say, sea level or ground. Okay, and that's somewhat like the amount of water in this tube, except we have a huge, we have a big tube, and that tube, of course, uh, now is going to be uh, 48,000 uh, millimeters, uh, at least uh, 49,000 millimeters tall. And that's the, how tall that would be. And the pressure of that water, well, how do we get to that? Well, we don't have a pressure unit in water, right? We have pressure units in millimeters of mercury, which are the same thing as torricellis or tor, as you would see. So what I did here is that I know that that water is 13.6 times less dense than mercury. So I divided by 13.6. If you notice, I took the height, I took the density and equals height times density. It's an inverse relationship. As the height gets bigger, okay, the density is smaller. As the height of the column supported by the same pressure is smaller, the density must be higher. So it's an inverse relationship. In any case, I divided by 13.6 and I got this amount of millimeters of mercury. So I converted, okay, I converted the water height into a mercury height, and a mercury height is a pressure unit. That's the key here. Now, I took this millimeters of mercury, and I converted to PSI and got 69.4. And as I told you, most households have pressure of water between 60 to 100 PSI. So back in the long day, because this tower is out of service, this brought... Uh, in town, okay, wherever the public water began, uh, approximately uh, 70 psi or 69 psi if it was filled to the top. So it gave a pretty good amount of pressure. Now, of course, uh, it could be increased by the movement of into smaller pipes. The Bernoulli's kind of effect there. In any case, if I take my psi and I convert it using another atmosphere equivalent. I get 4.7 atmospheres. Okay, so we create uh, 4.7 times the pressure of regular air by supporting water 160 feet. Okay, and these are just conversions from the equivalents I talked about, and this one right here is nothing more than the inverse relationship. I noticed the height of water has to be 13.6 times that or less, okay, in the height of mercury because mercury is so much more dense. And that's how I come up with the pressures that this tower came up with. So that's the, is the complete of story I can give you. And this is an example of the science around us dealing with water towers. So that water tower that's sitting in our plain view in our rural communities, okay, um, there's a lot of science behind it. Hope you grab something from that.